Hi, welcome to Programming on Purpose with Python. This is the seventh in our slideshows, and we're going to do a stopwatch with the split function. My name is Mike Callahan, and I'm a STEM educator. So using Python, you're going to design a stopwatch with the splitting function. Now we've already done most of the work. All we have to do is really add the splitting function. We're going to continue to learn about object-oriented programming, and we're going to focus on how to improve existing applications. Some prerequisites, you must have Python 3.7 installed. You must have TK Intertoy 1.2 installed. And you should have the code from Programming on Purpose number 6. The conventions, like in the other slideshows, code will be in monospace text, new code will be highlighted, objects will be in bold rounded text, and new words will be italicized. So our task is very simple. We're just going to add a split, or you could think of it as a lap function to the stopwatch. And we're going to have to modify the GUI to accommodate this split function. Now we have the code for a simple digital stopwatch. All we really need to do is add some features. We're going to add that split function which will allow the user to freeze the stopwatch display while the stopwatch itself continues to run in the background. And we're going to have to modify the GUI to support these new features. Now here's a big advantage of writing in modular code. It's going to turn out that our stopwatch class from programming on purpose number five is fine and it needs no changes. We are going to have to modify our GUI class but the main function, again, will be fine and will need no change. So all we have to do is modify the GUI class. So here's our stopwatch class. And like I said, you should already have this one from programming on purpose number five. If you don't, then pause the screen and start typing. All the code that we need, turns out, will be added to the GUI class. So all those methods in the class will need some minor changes. Init is going to require a new flag, which we will call self.freeze. Make GUI will need a new button, which we're going to label split. And a new method will be required, which we're going to call split resume. So here are the changes we have to make to init. Turns out it's just one line. It's just self.freeze equals false. So this will indicate whether or not the display is frozen. And since when we first start up, everything is not frozen, that's why it will be equal to false. The changes to the make GUI are quite straightforward as well. When we define our buttons, we're going to have to add a new button, which will be labeled split, and it will point to a new method called self.splitResume. And notice we're going to put it as our second button right after the start button. And then when this is created, we want to disable it. So we're going to do the self.when change state buttons number one, which will be the second button, to disabled. So here are the changes we need to make to start stop. It's a little more involved. First of all, if we're running, we have to check to see if we're frozen. If we're frozen, then we need to unfreeze. And then we're also going to disable that split button. Remember, if we're running and someone clicks on the start stop button, they want to stop it. So that's why we have to unfreeze and disable the split button. Else, if we're stopped, we want to start it and we're going to enable the split button.
there are no changes required for the reset method. We're going to have to change the update method. If the display is frozen, then we want to basically skip most of the method. So that's why you say, if not, self freeze, which means we're not frozen, then all the stuff we want to do, those four lines will have to be indented because it's under an if statement. In either case, we still want to run self dot when dot master the after to set up update to be called a hundredth of a second later. Okay, so most of the work is going to be done in this new method which is called split resume. And the way it's going to work is first we check the display if it frozen. If it is we want to unfreeze it and then change the text of the second button to split else we want to freeze the display and update the text of the second button to resume. In either case we want to update the display. So here's our new method split resume. You see it has only one argument which is the self argument and it doesn't return anything so there's the function documentation or the method documentation. So we start out if self.freeze colon, then we say self.freeze is false. That's going to unfreeze our display. So here's where we change the text of the second button and we're going to change it to the word split. Else we want to freeze the display. So self.freeze is going to be true. We're going to change the text of the second button to resume. And in either case, we want to update the display. Here is our new method, split resume. And again, if you've fallen behind, this would be a great time to freeze your display and get caught up. Now remember, I said we didn't have to change main. All we had to do was basically make our changes to the GUI class. So it's time to test our new stopwatch. And as you can see, it works. Just because it works, though, doesn't mean you're necessarily done. Lots of times when you write your first version of your code, you notice Maybe I can do things a little more efficiently or maybe a little faster. So split resume, we notice, does basically two things based on the flag self.freeze. It toggles self.freeze, and we'll explain what that is in just a second. And then it retexts the split resume button. So I want you to go to the shell window, and I want you to create a variable called boo variable and set it equal to true. Now I want you to type this line boo ver equals not boo ver. And this is what I mean by a toggle. If it is true, it makes it false. And if it's false, it makes it true. So you can see on our test down below in the shell window, we have boo ver and we've set it equal to true. And then we say Bouvier equals not Bouvier, and then we check Bouvier, and now it's false. And then we do the same line and check Bouvier, and now it's true. So that's what I mean by a toggle. So Boolean variable equals not a Boolean variable will toggle it. And this is a very useful thing to do. We're also going to take advantage of another feature of Boolean variables, and that is the fact that false is actually zero and true is actually one. So we can use a Boolean variable as an index operator into a string tuple. And again, we're at the shell window, so I want you to type in string tuple equals, 
and we're going to have a two string tuple of being no and yes. So now once we do that, if we say string tuple of false, notice it returns no. And then string tuple of true will return yes. So we're going to take advantage of this nice little feature. So here's our new split resume. We want to create a string tuple. We're going to toggle self freeze. We're going to retext the second but using that string tuple. And then we're going to call update. So here's our change of code. We're going to create that string tuple. We're going to call it button text. And it's going to be split and resume. And we're going to toggle self freeze by using the not operator. Now it's time to update the text on the button. And we're going to use a little Python magic here. Notice that the text argument is going to be equal to button text with self.freeze as your index. And if self.freeze is false, that's going to make the value split. And if self.freeze is true, that's going to make the value resume. So this will accomplish what we did in the previous method, but we do it on one line, taking advantage of the fact that you can use a Boolean as an index. And last, all we have to do is call self.update, and there was no change in the code from before. So we can compare the old split resume versus the new one. You can see the new one is what we would call more Pythonic, and it's also going to be faster. There's one more improvement we need to make. Notice that every time the user clicks on the second button, the button text tuple is created. Well, that only needs to happen when the GUI is first created. So we're going to move that line of text up into the init method, and we're going to make it a new attribute. So this is a great example of using the cut-paste part of the editor. So our new init will look like this with this new line self.buttonText that makes it an attribute equals our string tuple. Here is our new GUI class and again if you've fallen behind here's a great chance to get caught up. So let's run it and everything still works, so we're in good shape. So we're getting near the end, and uh, notice this is about the shortest slideshow we've had so far in this series, but that's a good thing, because we've proven just by adding or changing just about seven lines of code and adding a new method, we've created a digital stopwatch with a split feature. And this shows the advantage of writing modular, object-oriented code. So next, we're going to take this application, and we're going to convert it into a dual independent stopwatch. And we are going to use a brand new widget, which is the notebook. So I think you will find this to be extremely useful. Tinkertoy is hosted at the above link, and the documentation for it can be found at the lower link. But as always, the easiest way to get to it is just Google TK Intertoy. If you live in or near southern Indiana or Louisville, Kentucky, I teach two-hour free seminars at the Jeffersonville and the New Albany Public Libraries. So just call or go online to reserve your spot. 
Thank you for watching, and if you enjoy these little narrated slideshows, be sure to subscribe and tell some friends if they want to learn how to code in Python. Until then, happy coding.